Hey, it's Austin, the owner operator. We are mobilizing equipment from the federal project to, uh, oddly enough, a property we did way back when, if y'all remember the first video, uh, stump grinding next to a $5 million home. We are going to do some fire mitigation on five acres of their 35 acre property. So I've got the uh, PJ trailer, bandit track chipper back there, if you can see it. Pulling it up here, it's a beautiful day in Grand County, and um, I'm excited. We are continuing to work. Normally, right now, snow is gonna kind of hinder our ability to work, but snow's not flying yet, so we're gonna keep rolling. I think it's really easy for some business owners, especially in a seasonal business, after you get done with either one, a big contract, or two, if you get done with your busy season, it's really easy to take the foot off the gas. Look, I took the weekend, caught up with my family, hung out with my wife and daughter, but the reality is we can't take our foot off the gas. We gotta keep going. There's just this drive. It's like we just landed, we just finished up the, the two biggest projects we've ever had, and Theoretically, I could coast through the winter, but it's just not in my bones to coast. And I mean, I would encourage you, like take take a rest whenever you need it. Spend some time with your family, obviously, but man, if you're starting a business, it's just time to go. You gotta put the pedal to the metal and you gotta just go and you gotta go and you gotta keep going and you gotta go and you gotta go and you gotta go and you gotta go and you gotta keep going. And yeah, set some hard rules for yourself. You know, like I, I shut every day down at five and I go home and I spend time with my family. Um, and I work really hard not to work on the weekends when I don't have to. But right now, it's time to go. We got nice weather. It's time to keep the pedal to the metal. Hey, good morning. It's Austin Gray with Bear Claw Land Services. Thank you for watching this channel. We finished up our two fed projects up in Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, we purchased the bandit track chipper for the first federal project. We cleared like 20 acres of land. It was freaking awesome. Uh, I love that machine right there. That thing just eats. So if you remember this landscape, you can go back and watch uh, one of our first videos. We did the grinding stumps next to a $5 million house. So we had a 40 tree removal job here early on. Uh, we decked the logs, we hauled the logs, did all that stuff. We didn't really chip. We just used the uh, forestry mulcher. And that one, we had the Bobcat TA-70 and the Fecon forestry mulcher. And we're doing full-on fire mitigation through the State Forest Service in partnership with this HOA. So we're going to be cleaning up all the dead wood. We're going to be logging some of the areas. We're going to be thinning out a bunch of the lodgepole pine here. I'm actually going to reseed this while I'm here. Offer to do that for them. It's the best time to reseed right before the snow sets in. I'm on a project right now where we've got a ton of different species of trees. We've got lodgepole pine, we've got fir, and we've got, I think that's a spruce. But there's a lot of thinking that goes along whenever you're out here and you don't actually know if it's a spruce or a fir. Uh, some people are way better at identifying just visually, but spruce and fir trees look very similar. And here's a quick way to test. Um, on the federal project that we just finished up on, I got to work hand in hand with an ecologist and he told me a quick test is to do the finger roll test. So if you think, if you don't know the difference between, or if this is a spruce or a fir, Grab one of the needles, try to roll it in your fingertips. If it's flat and won't roll, remember flat is a fir, F and F. So that, that leaf is flat. Then if I come over here, this is a lodgepole pine. These are really easy to identify. But if you come over here to this tree, you see how that one looks very similar to that tree? They look very similar, similar visually. But if you grab one of these needles and you roll it, see how it rolls? That's a spruce tree. Remember, spin in your fingers is spruce. S and S, spin is spruce, flat is fur. Right, you know what I'm really tired of? I'm really tired of millennials and Gen Z thinking that they can play armchair quarterback whenever you have zero experience or zero cash to be 
an investor. If you're if you don't have the cash to be an investor, go build a business. The best way to go build a business is to put on your owner operator hat. It's the I, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's the least path of resistance. You see all these people, I see it all the time on Twitter. Everybody is wanting to go buy a business. But what gives you the qualifications to think that you can go buy a business that somebody, an owner operator, started way back when by simply just hustling, putting themselves out in the market, going and getting jobs, building their team, scrapping, staying up late, waking up early. Like what gives you the right to buy that dude or that lady's business. They've put in so much time and effort to build that thing. And unless you have the background or the experience running a small business, if you're coming from corporate, it's going to be a whole different ball game. And I'm seeing all these people go into this SMB acquisition world when in all reality, they haven't had any small business jobs. So if you want to get your small business chops, just go start a small local service-based business. It's the easiest path to entrepreneurship in my mind. Your market needs services. If you offer those services and if you optimize certain things like your website, your Google My Business, set up social media, do all the stuff that everybody in our generation knows how to do, then you're going to be light years ahead of your competition. Look, your competition likely doesn't have a website. They probably don't have a Google My Business and they dang sure don't know how to optimize the stuff. They just got business through word of mouth over the years. They've been in business for 30 years. They built a great business. They have a hold on the market. But what they're missing out on is the new market opportunity. Let me ask you this. What happens whenever you need a service? If you need a house cleaner, what do you do? You Google it, right? If you're trying to find a coffee shop, what do you do? Coffee shop near me. Same principle. If you can optimize for this as a service provider in your local community, you can easily go generate your first 100000 of revenue. And you can go beyond that. I believe as an owner operator, you should be able to do anywhere from $500,000 in revenue to a million bucks with just a couple people on your team. That's with you still wearing your owner operator hat. And you should be able to net profit at least 25 to 30% of that. Now, if you can find a service that you enjoy doing, who doesn't want to live that life? If you've made the decision that you have to work, which we all do, unless you're just generationally wealthy and you've inherited a lot of money, which I haven't, most of my friends haven't, other business owner, other small business owners who have started businesses, most of them haven't. You see, there's a motivation that comes along with starting a small business. And the motivation for me is to provide for my family to build wealth for my family so that we can go and enjoy certain things later on in life. But I understand that those things don't have to happen right now. There is a common trait between very successful people in the, in, in the sense that they can delay gratification. So I've already made the decision that my 30s, I'm 32, I'm going to go really hard between 8 to 5 in my 30s and by the time I'm 40. I want to be set up to where I can own real estate. I can make passive income. But here's the thing, like pop entrepreneurship culture has made it so popular to go generate passive income or live on a beach and generate revenue while you do nothing. It's like you don't get that without earning it. At least most people don't. You know, there's like the 0.01% of the tech entrepreneurs who have hit something really big and they scaled, but guess what? They still have to work at it. The, the most successful mentor I have ever had is a, a founder of a startup down in Austin and they still work in the business every single day. Sure, they've got millions of dollars in cash and they can go play golf if they want to, but they didn't get there by not earning it. They're in their late 30s and they've been hustling 
since their mid 20s and the moral of the story is you're not going to get what you want unless you put in the work there's no way around that and the faster I made the decision to step in through the role of an owner operator and just go out in my local market and generate leads generate sales drum up business hire people build a team when I made that decision to be an owner-operator, things got a lot better.